I'm Anne Louise from Minerva, and I'm here today to sew along with you this magnificent McCall's 7599. This 50s style dress is going to make an excellent addition to a summer wardrobe. This pattern is relatively easy to put together, it's so elegant and understated, and it will add a touch of class to any wardrobe. I imagine this dress in an English country garden enjoying a pot of tea and a cream and jam scone. Don't mean to be controversial, but cream goes first for me. This fitted bodice and circle skirt pattern comes in two variations. Version A, which is what we are making today, has a contrast band and shoulder straps, and version B has a tie shoulder strap and a slight cow neckline. The suggested fabrics for this dress are very spring-summer collection. The pattern packet suggests gingham, cotton, poplin, sateen and cotton blends. This dress also comes with a built-in petticoat to add some extra poof to the circle skirt. For that we will need netting and some lining fabric for the yoke. Of course, everything we talk about today is available on Minerva right now and will be linked down below and will pop up throughout the video for your ease of shopping. Today we are using this fabulous indigo denim blue gingham fabric from Minerva's core range. This fabric is just so beautiful. This 100% cotton is going to do fantastically for your garden parties and picnics, or just an evening summer walk in the park. This gingham comes in so many different colours, from this cool and breezy blue to your vibrant and exotic fuchsia pink, and everything in between. For our petticoat yoke, we are using an 100% cotton lawn, which is light enough to not affect the outside of the dress at all. For our contrast fabric, we have this shockingly white Minerva Core Range 100% cotton poplin. This will stand out amazingly against the colourful and checked background of the gingham. And last but not least, we have our white netting to create the extra poof in our petticoat. We will also need our matching thread, zipper, hooks and eyes, and something I like to add to my makes, the wonderfully woven hashtag Minerva Makers label. First things first, we have to double check through our pattern instructions for any hints and tips on how we sew our lovely dress. We will be using a 1.5cm seam allowance throughout and back stitching the beginning and ends of our stitch lines. Without further ado, let's get stitching. Our first job of the day is going to be making up our darts on the front of the bodice. There is no back darts on this pattern, which did throw me a little, but here we are. Firstly, I like to mark darts with chalk on both sides of the pattern piece. Then, once I remove the pins, I simply match up the chalk outlines, pinching the right sides together. How do you make your darts? Share your tips with the crafty community here at Minerva. Now we start by back stitching at the beginning of our darts, then working upwards, following the dart marks tapering off, and then we sew off the end. Please don't back stitch at the end of the darts, this will create awkwardly placed dimples. Stitch off the top of the dart and then tie off the threads.
We then press our bust darts downwards and our waist darts into the centre front. As this fabric is 100% cotton, it can take a lot of heat and steam. However, if you are using polyester thread, it may melt and make smudgy marks on the fabric. Repeat all these steps on our bodice lining. Gingham is a lot older in design than you might think. Gingham first appeared in the UK in the 17th century, brought over by Dutch traders, and was adapted by weavers in Manchester during the 18th century. Gingham is made by dyeing the threads beforehand, then weaving them over each other, creating that three-tone check pattern we are so used to today. Now our darts are all made up, we can make a start on our contrast band. With right sides together, we are going to sew the notched end of the front and back band, creating a continuous piece. Then we repeat that step on our bodice pieces, making one continuous piece with our back and front sewn right sides together, down one side. After we have sewn the side seam and pressed it open on our contrast band, we are going to fold it right sides together and sew the very ends, leaving the long open seam open to make a nice neat band. Once our band edges are sewn, we trim the seam allowance and clip the corners, turning the band right way out and lightly pressing. We then baste that long seam with wrong sides together, which can be a little tricky as the band pieces are cut on the bias, so it will sit nicely on the bodice. Once the band is basted, give another press to make sure it's not all wiggly. Then matching notches, side seams and dots, we base the contrast band to the outside of the main bodice pieces. You can use the basting on the contrast band to ease in some of the fullness if needed. I left about a 1.5cm gap between the end of the band and the end of the bodice, where the zip is going, just to make sure I wouldn't catch the band when sewing the zip later. Before we line the bodice, we are going to make our straps. First things first, we fold them right sides together and sew along that long edge. We then do a quick flip de doo so they are right way out and press them. Once the straps are pressed the right way out, we are going to run some gathering stitches along the front and back short ends of the straps. Once we've completed our gathering stitches, we are going to line up the edges of our straps with the marked dots on the bodice and gather the excess fabric to fit in the gap. We do this step on all four of the strap edges. We then base the straps to the bodice. Apart from a wonderful contrast, what else can you use poplin for? Poplin has a tight weave, meaning it's extremely durable, however still feels silky. No wonder we see poplin everywhere. It is extremely lightweight, so makes good summer garments and shirts for men and women. As it is so lightweight, it can be a little sheer, so it also makes a good lining to give a garment a bit of extra modesty. Now our straps are basted in, we can attach our lining. Right sides together we are going to sew along the top edge of our bodice, catching the straps, bodice band and our lovely Minerva label. Let's have a look at what some makers on Minerva have made. There are hundreds of linked posts under Poplin. A post by a maker that I follow, Moa Scandinavian Abroad, has made a whimsical and stylish black Poplin poofy sleeve dress, perfect to explore a forest or a castle. Do you like someone's style? 
or want to see what they'll make next, make sure to give them a follow, it might make their day. Let's see what else we have. What about a bit of quilting? Have a look at this make by Rosemary Alice and her wonderful sunshine quilt. And finally, for a lining fabric, we have this gorgeous example from Oh So Vintage. I am a little bit in love with this dress. It looks totally twirl worthy. What about you? Have you been inspired by any of these makes? Looking for some more inspiration on what you can sew with, with our gingham fabric featured today? Look no further than the tagged posts underneath the fabric. For example, the wonderful Samantha Elliott shows off this simple and stylish summer dress. It looks so cool and breezy. Looking for maybe something a bit more party or occasion ready? Look no further than the skirt and top combo made by this gorgeous maker. I love the fun back. Once our lining and bodice are attached, we are going to press the seam allowance towards the lining and understitch everything to the lining, including our label. This is going to prevent anything rolling forward and peeping over the contrast band. If it's struggling to sit nicely, try clipping the seam allowance just to give it some give. But as the neckline is pretty straight, you shouldn't need to. And this is our progress so far, a fully lined bodice with beautiful contrast band and straps. Are you looking for some more 50s looks? Why not use the vintage style filter now available when searching for patterns? It's something I love to use. There you can find more lovely looks like Butterick 4790, an iconic Great British Sewing Bee Make. Apparently so easy that you can start it in the morning and walk away in it in the afternoon. Perhaps you are leaning towards something a bit more evening wear? Then look no further than Charm Patterns Bryant Gown. The Charm Patterns are extremely popular on Minerva, with lots of tagged posts. Why not have a scroll? Are you a vintage lover or have we inspired you to find your era? Let us know in the comments. Now our bodice is ready to go, we can start work on our fabulous full circle skirt. First things first, with right sides together, we are sewing our side seam. Then on the other side, we sew the side seam right sides together, stopping our stitching at the marked dot to leave a space for our zip. Then we repeat these steps on our petticoat yoke pieces. We press all skirt and petticoat seams open. Once our petticoat yoke pieces are sewn together, we are going to attach all our netting pieces right sides together. And then we start the mammoth task of putting in a gathering stitch at the top of what feels like 8 metres of fabric. I hope you enjoy me waging war against the evil forces of petticoat netting. I shall not be defeated. I just want to take a quick break here at the halfway mark to talk about the wonderful community here at Minerva. We really want to encourage everyone to take up something crafty. At the top right of the post, you will be able to follow Minerva and keep up to date with offers, new releases, general fabric prettiness, and of course, tutorials, sew alongs, and top pattern picks. 
Let us know what you would like to see next. Comment below, we'd really love to hear what you think. Once our gathering stitch is in place, we gather the netting to fit our petticoat yoke. This is going to help hold out and show off the circle skirt and make it extra fun to twirl in. I marked the centre front and centre back on my yoke piece, then pinned the four side seams of the netting to the centre marks and the side seams, then gathered in the fullness, to try and make sure I got an even amount of poof all the way round. Looking to have a go at sewing with some cotton lawn? What about a blouse? I am a huge fan of a dramatic poofy sleeve. So for a dramatic airy blouse, look no further than our maker Alison Sears. If you have made anything with a fabric from Minerva, or if you just want to share your latest make, please post it, you never know who you will inspire. Then with right sides together, we sew the netting to the yoke. Something like the circle skirt is so recognisable for the 50s, early 60s, but we're not really sure where the style came from. The best bet is the Dior New Look collection of 1947. During the 40s, fabric had been heavily rationed. People couldn't afford to keep up with changing fashion trends, so the less fabric used to make something, the better. Then, at the end of the war, Dior came along and changed it up, with items like the bar suit that featured a wasp-waisted jacket and a massively poofy pleated skirt. It drew people towards a more feminine, less military-inspired look, like the one we are sewing today. You see a real mix of styles in this picture of Queen Elizabeth from the 1950s. The neckline detailing and peplum is quite 40s in look, however we have a gathered skirt using up extra fabric and adding poofiness. But to every rule there is an exception. Some of my favourite 50s looks are like this fitted suit with a wide lapel, peplum and long pencil skirt. I truly think the 50s is an era that everyone, no matter their shape, can get involved in. Want to show your figure a little? Wasp waisted suit it is. Want to hide a food baby? Also no problem. Try a gathered skirt, blouse and belt to draw in the waist. It's so identifiable and so elegant. Forget the 80s, I want to bring the 50s back. Once our netting is attached, we're going to start to bring everything together. As I'm putting in an invisible zip, the first thing I'm doing is attaching the petticoat yoke, right sides together to the bodice lining, free of the main bodice. We will match notches and side seams. Once the lining waist seam is sewn, we are going to press the seam allowance upwards. Then we repeat this step on the outer bodice and our circle skirt. We are also going to clip that seam once it's sewn. As the skirt is very curved, I like to clip the seam allowance just to make sure it sits nicely. This is also makes it easier to iron the seam allowance upwards. Now all our tops and bottoms are attached, we can pop in our zip to the gap left on the open side seam of the dress. With right sides together, we are going to put the right side of the open zip to the left side of the dress opening. I like to baste this in first, just to ensure I line up my waist seam and edges, also because I don't fully trust my machine. I'm suspicious. We then sew our invisible zipper with, surprise surprise, our invisible zipper foot.
Then a very handy trick I learnt from a pattern a while ago, flip the lining out and sew it down, right sides together with the outer fabric, and sewing down the zipper tape, making a kind of zipper sandwich between the outer fabric and the lining. This creates a really neat finish on the inside of our garment. Have you found any handy tips you've learnt from other patterns? Let us know in the comments! We can't talk about blue gingham without mentioning the most famous blue gingham dress of all time. The dress worn by Julie Garland in 1939 in the film The Wizard of Oz. I think there are very few outfits that are as recognisable as that one. There were actually several dresses used in the film. One was sold at auction in 2015 for a very impressive $1.6 million. We can't promise that our Minerva Core Range gingham will bring such a high price, but we can guarantee great quality fabrics. Now all we need to do is press, sew in our hooks and eyes, and we are done. And here she is folks, a truly cinema worthy dress that's quick and easy to make and personalise. I love the length and fullness of the skirt. The petticoat adds some really nice volume. And I don't know about you, but I can find petticoats quite itchy. This knitting is so light and soft, I don't notice it at all. This pattern is made to stand out and knock people out with the vintage vibes. Why not try going for a grease lightning look, adding biker boots and a leather bomber jacket? Or keep it simple with a knitted cardigan and pumps. There is so many ways to play around and style this pattern. I also kind of fancy it for a bridesmaid's dress. What do you folks think? I would say this is a good bank holiday project. The gathering of the netting and the hemming of the circle skirt may end up taking a whole day on their own. The instructions are clear to follow and easy to deviate from if you fancy doing a bit of pattern hacking. You could easily turn this into a skirt and crop top or add a matching little jacket. Here at Minerva we love to hear your views. What would you like to make with this gingham fabric? What fabric would you use for this McCall's pattern? Any questions comment below and we'd be happy to answer them. And don't forget, Minerva Craft Club members get a 10% discount for 12 months when they sign up. And creating a free account, you'll get a welcome present of a discount coupon. So join us with our lovely community of makers, follow, comment and like. And we'll see you next time.